Okay, thanks everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I wanted to uh, welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Jen Weesey and I will be your moderator. Um, I work with the Grails and Micronaut team here at Object Computing. And again, thank you for joining us. We are really, really excited for our guest presenter today, Guillaume LaForge. He's a developer advocate for Google and a member of the Micronaut Foundation Technology Advisory Board, and he is joining us all the way from Paris. So in this complimentary webinar, Guillaume is going to demonstrate some options that you have to deploy your Micronaut applications and services on Google Cloud without spending a lot of time on your infrastructure. Thank you again. And with that, I will pass it over to you, Guillaume. Thank you very much. Uh, so it's my pleasure today to tell you that Micronaut is great fit for the Google Cloud Platform, and in particular, the serverless solutions, as well as the, the reverse uh, thing in the sense that uh, both are great fit for each other. Uh, Micronode, you know, starts so fast, uh, consumes low memory, so it's really great for serverless services that you need me to, to start fast. So let me uh, tell you a bit more about this. So as um, Jen said, uh, if my clicker, yeah, wants to click. Um, so yeah, I'm Guillaume. I'm pretty well known in the Groovy community for uh, being the uh, the co-founder of the uh, Groovy programming language back in the day in 2003. So that's a long time ago. I'm also a Java champion. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy to be part of the uh, tech advisory board for the uh, the Micronet Foundation. This is, this is really exciting and there's uh, lots of interesting stuff coming up on the roadmap. So really looking forward to see uh, that uh, next. Um, so a few words about the Google Cloud Platform. Uh, it's a pretty big platform these days uh, in the sense that there's really tons of regions, of zones, of uh, network edge locations, etc. cetera. Uh, you can find the, the, the various services, databases, um, compute products, etc., uh, everywhere, and hopefully in a data center near you. And uh, this is really just a, a little panorama of the, the stuff that's available, but there are many, many more products than this. Um, I'm particularly interested today in the compute part, so that's why I'm going to show you App Engine, Cloud Run, Cloud Functions. Uh, I'm also going to use uh, along the way, some other products like, uh, where is it, PubSub, where is my PubSub? Uh, I think I'm using PubSub, where is it? No, it's, uh, oh, forgot it in the in this slide. So yeah, I, there are tons of stuff missing. Things like PubSub, I'm going to use the Cloud Firestore database as well. Uh, well, many useful things uh, and services and APIs that you're able to use and mix and match within your uh, Micronaut applications. So let's focus a little bit on those compute aspects. If you think about all that available, uh, the various types of compute options that exist today, even outside the, the, the cloud itself, uh, when you're on premises, on your own servers, you have to handle everything from the uh, the physical hardware or virtual hardware, the OS, any patch security issues that you might have, you need to patch, et cetera. So you have to look at everything from the bottom up to your application, runtime application or functions. But as you move towards the, the right of this, uh, let's say diagram, um, you're kind of moving up the stack and you're focusing like on compute engine, you really focus on uh, virtual machines. If you use something like Kubernetes engine, you're going to focus on the OS up to uh, whatever's up, that, up there. And then you have platforms like CloudRun. It's still um, a bit like Kubernetes in the sense that we're handling containers, but it's uh, at a higher level. App Engine, now you don't need to focus about the app runtime, but just focus on the app and the functions or services, microservices above. And same thing with Cloud Functions, where we really just focus on some units of code. So here today, we're particularly interested in this particular zone 
where we deploy apps, containers, and functions on the, the Google Cloud. A few words about the, the serverless buzzword. Um, you can see it with uh, two lenses or two angles. There's an operational model um, where indeed you don't focus on all the infrastructure management. So you don't have to provision servers, uh, prepare your clusters, etc. All the security is handled for you by the platform. So Google Cloud handles all the security patches under, under the hood. And the key thing is the uh, pay for usage model in the sense that if your services are idle, uh, they are not gonna cost you anything because there's no traffic coming towards your, your services. Uh, whereas if you, let's say you have a certain level of traffic and suddenly there's a spike, there's twice as much traffic, you're gonna pay twice as much. So pretty much proportionally to the, the actual usage. And the uh, underlying infrastructure is going to scale for you the various uh, services. So scale down to zero if nobody uses your services or if it's like once a month, once a week, once every hour or something, uh, up to one or up to many instances running in parallel if needs be. Uh, the other approach that's the programming model. So with um, serverless solutions, you tend to focus more on finer grain services. Let's call them microservices. So you take a, a service based approach to how you you decouple the various uh, important parts of your uh, business logic and application code. Uh, we tend to write more even driven code because you react to events coming up from the various services, from the cloud itself. And uh, HTTP is also a kind of event, it's a synchronous event, but otherwise things like, uh, let's say a new file appearing on a, on a cloud storage bucket, that's an event that can trigger something like a, a cloud function, for instance. Uh, the other thing as well is that we're trying as much as possible to be uh, more open. And when I say more open, I, I mean open source in the sense that the, the runtime we create uh, or for example, for Cloud Run, the underlying um, APIs, the Knative APIs uh, are things that are open source which don't lock you in this particular platform, but allows you to move those functions, those apps, those containers elsewhere as well, on-premise or uh, even on hybrid solutions. Uh, so the focus is on those three cloud functions, App Engine Cloud Run. Cloud functions, it's really source-based, event-driven function. So events like, uh, as I said, a file on, on a cloud storage bucket, a message on, on a pub sub queue. Uh, you can also create custom events uh, with cloud audit logs. So you can create some special logs that are going to trigger your functions. Um, App Engine is more for things like web front ends or mobile backends, uh, web APIs. Uh, there are some interesting characteristics to, to App Engine that are uh, only coming up uh, to Cloud Run, things like uh, it's, it's capability of serving things like static assets with a built-in CDN. That's something that's very powerful. If you have a single page app where you serve all your front-end code, uh, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, et cetera, and then you call the backend APIs, you can serve this, uh, those static assets very rapidly. That's uh, something that's been uh, there on App Engine for a very, very long time. And Cloud Run, I would say almost it's for anything else. That's not a, a runtime provided by the, the Cloud Functions or App Engine platform. Anything that runs in a container uh, and containers in general, container images that are portable across other platforms as well, such as uh, running on Kubernetes or things like that. So now let's zoom in on Cloud Functions. So I mentioned already uh, various sources of events, uh, messages on PubSub, uh, direct synchronous calls on, through the various HTTP methods. Uh, there are some useful services like Cloud Task or Cloud Scheduler, for example, where you can run your services on a schedule. Uh, so for example, you want to create a monthly report or uh, every time at midnight, you want to compute some stats or something, you, you can use additional services, which allow you to glue things together to 
glue your functions together. And uh, yeah, from functions you can use um, all the, uh, the, the the key services offered by the, the Google Cloud Platform. And something I wanted to mention as well with Cloud Functions, it's often used in things like um, the Google Assistant, like if you have a Google Home at home or you're creating your own chatbots for your e-commerce platform or something, you can use Google Assistant or the Dialogflow chatbot platform and configure a cloud functions to react to this and uh, you know have a conversation with your users via voice. So that's pretty, uh, pretty cool. Until uh, recently, Cloud Functions was available only for Node, Python, and Go, but we announced the beta for Java 11, and hopefully, uh, well, I'm not supposed to give dates, but uh, hopefully uh, within the next few weeks or months uh, at worst, you should have the general availability version of Java 11. We're going with Java 11 because uh, that's the, the latest LTS, long-term support version of Java provided by Oracle. Uh, so we really try to focus on the, 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 the highest level of you know, maintenance and why we're not like providing, uh, let's say Java 13, 14, whatever. So you can now write functions uh, in Java. There are two kinds of functions. So synchronous functions, which are HTTP functions, which can react to get, post, put, delete options, method calls. Uh, the, the Google Cloud Platform, uh, Google Cloud Functions Platform provides uh, a URL for your functions directly. So you don't have to configure some, some domain name or something like this. You have a URL that you can invoke from other places or other services as a webhook, like things like a, um, a GitHub commit hook, for example, that could ping your cloud function when someone commits something or creates a pull request, you know. Uh, for HTTP functions, you can access the header, the body, you can um, provide a status code in the response. You can use uh, writers or streams, uh, object streams. And you also have the proper background functions, which are even more uh, asynchronously event oriented. That's the ones which react to uh, cloud related events, but some messages, new file on cloud storage, etc. Or yeah, I did mention that what the, the Cloud Firestore, uh, NoSQL document database, uh, you can get your function triggered when someone changes something in the database, which can be interesting if you want to be notified of a new line or new order or, some, or any new entity in your database. Uh, before moving to App Engine, let me show you a couple of things. So for, uh, I need to get back a full screen. Um, the goal of this uh, webinar obviously is to show MyCrowd in action and running on those uh, great serverless platforms. So I prepared some uh, little demos. And for those demos, I actually just started with the MyCrowd launch tool, right? So all the samples, so I tweaked some of them to add a, uh, like a, a Gradle plugin or um, like a dependency or things like that, some additional uh, configuration tweaks. But otherwise, what's great is that with Micronaut Launch, so you can create applications, you can create functions, you can add features. There's a dedicated uh, Google Cloud Functions uh, feature that can be added. And then you can choose Java, Kotlin, Groovy as the programming language. You can choose your build tool, you can use your testing framework and even preview the stuff. Uh, so for example, here I have a default pub sub message driven function that's created. And uh, in the builder Gradle, you have everything that is set up properly. For example, there's even an invoker that's an API that's provided by uh, the Cloud Functions team to allow you to run functions locally, which is pretty, pretty useful. And things, uh, what else I wanted to show you? Uh, yeah, let, let me show you this, uh, a, couple, a couple first functions that I've created with the Micronaut launch platform. So I've already deployed them here. So I have two functions created with Micronaut. 
the hello world kind of function that is using HTTP functions, and also a function which is triggered by a pub sub message. So let's start, let's say with the uh, hello function. Okay, so I, again, generated a template project thanks to my Chrome launch. Uh, I think I configured, what did I configure? Let me show you. Um, mm -mm. I think I added one thing which uh, we document on the, um, what do we call the Cloud Functions Framework? That's the uh, API. And it's also documented in the um, uh, Cloud Functions support in the Micronaut documentation, by the way. Uh, so I added this uh, task, which allows me to run functions locally on my machine without having to deploy it, which is super useful. Let me show you uh, my Hello controller. So it's a very simple controller. I'm going to listen on slash hello and just say example response. Uh, so let me, am I in the correct directory? Yes, Gradle, run function. And uh, I think by default, oh, I think I might have to, no, it's okay. Uh, I don't have to define the default function. Uh, let me copy and paste localhost. So I need to go to slash hello where my controller is and this function uh, is running locally without me having to deploy it in the cloud. Oh, there's a, what's going on? Some stack trace, error encoding object, although it worked, I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, I guess that was for the, the previous, um, uh, the, the call which wasn't on slash hell. Uh, and something I would like to say is, let's say, um, on Micronaut response, I'm going to change something here. Micronaut, just to show that all those that know Micronaut know that already, but for me, just making a small change to a function and seeing the function live already with the change applied, that's really uh, something that I totally love. And um, so deploying a function can take a little while. Uh, let me copy and paste uh, a few things. So I can create, so there, there are uh, two ways to deploy functions, whether it's uh, with uh, a jar or with, uh, from, from sources. So it's possible to also run uh, from sources. Um, either a function or in general, not necessarily a, a Micronaut function, but a, a Java project or Groovy or whatever that's built with Maven or Gradle uh, can be uh, deployed and built from sources within the cloud. So on uh, Google Cloud build, and it's going to deploy that on the Cloud Functions uh, runtime. So deployment of a function take like one or two minutes. Uh, let me see, so what's the URL that's gonna be, let me go to the, the Cloud Console. Yeah, I didn't show you the, the Google Cloud Console. Uh, so that's the Google Cloud Console, that's the UI. You have the command line tool that you can use. There's a dedicated Cloud Functions uh, section here. You can see that my hello function is currently deploying. Uh, well, I can show you just uh, quickly, even if it's the previous version till the other one is deployed. Uh, so you have some stats here, you can see some sources, you can test here as well. And automatically there's a URL that is provided for you. So the, the URL is, uh, I think I need to do a double hello actually, because otherwise that's gonna be the, um, the, the homepage. So you can see that that's my new, uh, oh, wow, that's uh, cool because it just uploaded uh, right at the right moment. So that's cool. Micronaut response, that's the little change I made to my Micronaut controller. Um, so the URL that's provided, I'm based in Europe, so I used Europe West one. Uh, the name of my project, so that's Micronaut, and then cloudfunctions.net slash hello, that's the name, the symbolic name of my function and hello, that's the name of my controller. So really it's fairly easy to deploy a function. And I really, what I, what I like is that um, in particular where you use HTTP functions, 
uh, you're actually developing a Micronaut controller. And this Micronaut controller, uh, it's just a plain Micronaut controller. So you can run that on, you know, elsewhere as a standalone jar somewhere or on another cloud platform, anywhere you can run a JVM. But here, thanks to the, uh, the, the work that the Micronaut team did, they actually wrap the underlying, underlying Java Functions APIs to allow you, Micronaut developers, to create controllers just the way you're used to create controllers. And that way you have a, an HTTP function that's a, a, a plain Micronaut controller. So that's pretty cool. The other function that I have created, so function hello, I'm going to show you, uh, I can save that one. I'm going to show you a pub sub function. So again, generated with Micronaut launch and I only added, um, so I think, actually, I think I didn't change anything on that one. Yes, uh, yeah. So the sole thing I changed compared to the, the default uh, function, I, I slightly uh, changed this one, I think, or not even, I think that's the, like the one from the documentation or something. No, it's a, a little bit different because I tweaked. Um, so let me explain you the, 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 the code. So I tweaked the, the example that's generated. When you receive a PubSub message, so PubSub is really um, a queue system, a message broker, so that your various services interact with each other. It's a, it's a communication channel for your services. Um, and it provides topics. You can filter messages across those topics, etc. You can create subscriptions. You can do things like retries when something is not uh, like your service failed and you want the message to be retried till it succeeds or uh, what else. There are some super powerful capabilities with Cloud PubSub, things like being able to replay. So let's say production crashed and then you can create snapshots on a regular basis and replay past messages to get to a, a great stage, great state. Uh, so what I changed, I think was this, where I'm using the, um, um, I'm decoding the payload of the PubSub message because there's an envelope around the message and there's a data, uh, that's this one, the data attributes. And uh, I'm going to decode that because it's encoded in base 64. And uh, what else I did, and I'm really just like logging the, uh, the message. I'm not really doing anything really fancy here. So let me show, oh yeah, on the, um, so here we're actually implementing the uh, Cloud Functions Java API. So that's a background function, which is generified with a PubSub message. And uh, the thing, that's added that is specific, let's say to a micro compared to uh, a, a cloud function, a rogue cloud function uh, outside of the scope of micro uh, is, is that there's this uh, micro integration. Uh, that's the feature that we added in the uh, micro launch uh, template. And what it does is that it allows you to wire all the things basically. So things like add inject, it's going to inject uh, my service, my done service that is there, it's going to inject that in my cloud function. So just a quick demo. Uh, let me show you um, PubSub. PubSub is here. I have a topic. So what do I do? I'm just uh, saying, yeah, I'm just putting the uh, output, raw output without any particular message. So I'm going to publish a new message. Hello, Micronaut developers, let's go serverless, whatever. I'm going to publish that message. Oh, it's published. And then I'm going to look into uh, logging. That's where I can see what happened. And by default, so I can configure logging more uh, properly with log back and everything. Uh, but um, here, when you do system out the print line, it's going to print, uh, on the, the, the logging platform. So the uh, system out stream is uh, retrieved and redirected to the logging platform. So I need to go to cloud functions. 
in my function. Yeah, it should be here and right at the bottom. You should be able to see here. Hello, my Corona developers. Let's go serverless. That's the message we just received. So it's really easy to create functions. Um, I think that's about it for functions. And uh, yeah, um, other kind of functions, as I said, you can react to new messages uh, on uh, Firestore databases. Uh, cloud audit logs, you can create uh, specific audit log messages, etc. So you can react to all sorts of events. Let me move back uh, to the slides here. Need to hurry up a little bit, I think. App Engine. App Engine is the way you deploy apps, mobile backend, web APIs, serve static asset, um, things like that. So it's uh, the I would say it's the oldest serverless solutions provided by Google Cloud. And uh, it's funny because, so it was released in 2008. Uh, back then it was platform as a service, but it exhibited all the serverless characteristics that we explained in introduction. Uh, so pay as you go, et cetera, all those things were already there. Um, and the, the funny thing was that, um, in 2009, when they released the Java runtime, uh, I worked uh, with the, so I wasn't working for Google back then. Uh, we were um, working for a little company called G21, which was providing services around Groovy, Grails, Micronaut wasn't there yet. And uh, uh, Google actually asked us whether we could ensure that alternative languages like the Groovy programming language would run well on App Engine. So that was my, my first foray into uh, this, app in, this App Engine platform. And uh, I've been using it for, well, since 2009, like for my own blog and things like that, my own blog platform. So what's great, so we focused on functions. Now it's a little more, of, let, let's say a, a bigger level of granularity. You, you deploy apps on App Engine. So you focus again on the code, on the app, and that's the platform that's going to handle the rest for you, the scaling from two to zero to one to N. Um, there are different runtimes that are available. Uh, currently, uh, we, again, just like for Cloud Functions, we went with Java 11, which is the, the latest uh, long-term maintenance support version. Um, and uh, what else? Some of the cool stuff uh, that I like about App Engine compared to uh, Cloud Function, that's the fact that um, Cloud Functions, there's a concurrency level of one, meaning that there cannot be two concurrent or more requests coming to one function at a given time. So it needs to spin up many instances. Whereas with App Engine and also Cloud Run, as we shall see later on, uh, one application can serve 80 concurrent requests at the same time. And after those 80 concurrent requests, it's going to spin up a new instance of that service. So 80 plus 80, and you can have potentially hundreds of instances serving your application. Uh, the other thing which is interesting uh, with um, App Engine is that you can cut your apps into services and your services can actually scale differently and, ha and have different uh, scaling uh, capabilities as well. Uh, and the other thing that's interesting, uh, I forgot if I, yeah, I think I can show you that actually before showing any, any code. Uh, if I go to the App Engine console here on the Cloud Console, you can see uh, like the various versions of, I currently have only one service uh, that is deployed, but I have several versions that are deployed. So I don't think I made any changes to that part, those particular versions. Uh, but for Cloud Run, I'll show you how to do things like um, the fact that you can have several versions of different services. You can do things like gradual rollout, blue green canary deployments, etc. You can do that kind of stuff or serve different versions. For example, for your QA team, uh, you want to have the QA validate that the new version is great. Okay, they're going to do their tests, etc we get a, the green light, then we can switch and change the traffic and say, okay, I want to change the traffic. Uh, so I can split different ways with through IP addresses, 
with cookie at random, etc. And I can say, uh, so across different versions. So let's say uh, I want to have a 30% of traffic serving this particular application uh, version, sorry, of the uh, service or not. That's uh, pretty, that, that's pretty cool and, and useful. And for example, for um, those who's, who've perhaps used the, the Groovy web console, that, that's a way to run uh, snippets of Groovy code uh, online on the web. Uh, for example, I deployed different versions of the console, of the, of the yeah, um, web console, um, the Groovy console to uh, serve different versions of Groovy, for example. So, so that, that's a, a handy usage of, of that uh, capability. Um, yeah, and let me go back here. Thank and you. Yeah. Uh, pardon yep. the interruption, but there's a question related to some of that in the chat that uh, now yep. might be a good time to address. So uh, uh, there's a question that is, uh, are, there, are there, can you see the question? Yeah, so are there dynamic routing policies available for traffic management based on conditions? Um, so conditions, um, not really. So as you could see, like the traffic splitting I was doing, that's really, uh, like cookies, IP addresses, random, et cetera. Uh, but custom conditions, no. Uh, that said, um, there's something that is pretty new, but it's only in beta right now, which is, um, so we have a, a global cloud load balancer uh, that now understands uh, our serverless products. And that allows you to do things like um, provide traffic to uh, let's say a function, an app, a container that's in a particular region because that's the region you're in. So if you want to have geographically uh, traffic distribution or things like that. So there, there are some options now. Uh, I'm not showing that in this uh, presentation. It's more really definitely more advanced, uh, but there, there are some options around uh, more fine grain uh, controls. So things are coming, but it's still uh, yeah fairly new, I would say, in this uh, area, especially for uh, our serverless products. So it's uh, brand new. So I encourage you to look at, uh, I guess I can show you if I find serverless. Neg, will it, yeah, so this one, and there was a blog post as well, actually, about it. Uh, so this is the documentation, but there was, a. Um, serverless network endpoint no so that's again the the documentation that's not the link i wanted but yeah you might have a look at this to see uh what you can do or not in terms of uh, control of traffic etc so have a look at this all right let's continue uh yeah the other thing i wanted to mention that's the uh, cdn static asset serving so i've I don't think I've configured it for this application that I'm going to show you next. Uh, App Engine, App Engine front end, um, SRC, and Appable. Yeah, I didn't configure the static assets. Um, the uh, static assets, what, what's interesting with, so let me go back just in full screen mode for a few seconds. Um, when you use a serverless platform, once in a while, especially when you scale from zero to one, or when there's a sudden peak of traffic and the, the platform needs to create more instances of your services, you may experience cold starts. That means that uh, in addition to have your uh, new instance of your application being started, so there's your own startup time, but there's also the platform startup time that creates the uh, instances to run your application. So you may face a few hundred milliseconds or a few seconds potentially max uh, of, of time before um, tra traffic is served. And I was saying in the um, introduction, I think um, what's great is that, especially nowadays where we tend to write more uh, apps like serverless, uh, uh, like, uh, sorry, um, single uh, page applications and things like that, you know, React, Vue.js, Angular, and uh, all those uh, new cool frameworks. What's great is that with those things, or even with server-side rendering where 
you have static assets and you, you do progressive enhancement and things like that. You serve static assets in no time with a platform like App Engine because you can do static asset solving from uh, CDNs on content uh, delivery networks. So that means that even if your instances are not yet ready to serve uh, business logic traffic, at least your front end is ready and is already solving. And then you can uh, call your back end and it's gonna be, I mean, the call starts, we will be not really visible to your end users, which is uh, something that's pretty cool. And we're working on that as well for Cloud Run, but it's uh, fairly new, whereas uh, App Engine provided that uh, since, well, pretty much the, the beginning of the platform. So again, I wanted to show you, um, so it's really just a, a Micronaut application uh, what I did here, so I really only have like a, a single controller. There's a, a dummy page that says uh, Hello Google Cloud. And uh, just for the fun, I wanted to show you that you can use a database here. I used Cloud Firestore. And let me show you what it's uh, going to do. Um, so app, uh, what's my, uh, perhaps I have it running somewhere. Uh, that's, no, that's cloud functions. Yeah, this one. So this one is my uh, App Engine application running. It's, so there's really uh, the, the instances currently, there's like, there, there were zero instances because there was no traffic coming up, but now there's one that's been created to serve my traffic. Uh, so which tab was it? Uh, that was uh, this one. So let me do this and move that here. That'll be easier for me. Uh, I have so some dashboard like stats and such and my service that is here and I deployed already four versions. If I go here, so that's my uh, controller here. Uh, that, that's really just the index and that says hello Google Cloud. Okay, and I also created another uh, endpoint here that is actually using uh, Cloud Firestore. So Cloud Firestore here, I'm configuring the Cloud Firestore NoSQL database to have access to my collection of pets. And I'm doing a snapshot of the data that's stored in, the, in this uh, collection. And then I'm going to return the name of my uh, pets. Oh, there was a little problem. Don't know what happened. I need to look into the logs to see something went wrong. No, I don't know. Um, well, I don't want to waste too much time uh, figuring this out, but yeah, in my uh, Firestore database, let me show you Firestore quickly. I have um, a couple of pets. Yeah, pets, Shuket, that's my cat, and Toby, a dog, but I don't have a dog. I prefer a cat. So these are the like the two documents that are served here and I just returned. So I should have used a proper like JSON rendering view, et cetera, but I, I went with a, something a bit of a hack with just a string builder. But, uh, you know, it's very easy to um, configure uh, extra databases. So I just imported a Firestore. I added in the build.gradle, I added, uh, where is it? Um, this one here, the Firestore dependency and then I was able to uh, create this uh, little query to find all the, uh, all the pets in my data store. Uh, do -do -do yeah, that's about it. So uh, let me go back here. Uh, I think I just wanted to check something. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Yeah, I'm staging and deploying. Yeah, that's... Uh, did I want to say something? Yeah, oh yeah, something I wanted to mention. I knew I, I wanted to say something about the build. Uh, build at Gradle, uh, where is it? It's at the top. Uh, so compared to what I generated with Micronaut Launch, just again to do a parallel with what the what is being scaffolded for you. Uh, I In my build at Gradle, I added uh, this configuration for the uh, App Engine Gradle plugin that allows me to uh, prepare the deployment of an App Engine application 
and that works totally fine with uh, Micron. So I'm using that plugin and uh, I want to use uh, the shadow jar and I don't want to use the non-shady jar. So I just tweak this uh, bit a little bit to just deploy the, um, the shadow jar named after the, the, the standard jar. So that when I actually deploy, so that was the, my cheat sheet here, I can use the App Engine plugin, say App Engine stage, and it's going to create for me, uh, I think I might have a finder somewhere that can show you that App Engine. In the build, I have a, a staged app here that contains uh, my shady jar here. Oh yeah, I didn't show you the app.yaml file as well. That's the app, app YAML uh, specific file uh, configuration file. And the sole thing I did here to say, in addition to adding the plugin, but that's really just to, um, I don't need the plugin per se, but it creates the staging area for me, etc. cetera. Uh, in addition to what Micronaut Launch creates, I just added uh, in, in SRC main app engine app.yaml, I added this app.yaml file with runtime colon Java 11 to say, this is a Java 11 app engine application that I'm deploying. That's all I'm doing to deploy my application, my Micronaut application on app engine. So we've already seen that app engine runs, uh, uh, app engine, Micronaut runs as functions, uh, background functions, HTTP functions. We've seen that app engine, uh, oh, again, Micronaut runs as an app engine application. And now we'll have a look at, we'll finish with Cloud Run to say that you can also deploy Micronaut applications containerized uh, on the Cloud Run platform. So Cloud Run, uh, it's a new take on um, serverless, serverless. So there, there was past platform as a service, things like App Engine, Heroku, et cetera, where uh, you were uh, focusing on apps that you were deploying on, on, on some platform. Uh, often, um, People think about serverless as function as a service, but it's really just not, it's not limited to things like cloud functions or AWS Lambda, Azure, uh, Azure functions, et cetera, Oracle, uh, FN functions, et cetera. No, um, serverlessly, um, you can also deploy containers. And the idea behind Cloud Run is that you can have the very same characteristics and attributes as all those serverless platforms, but deploy, run uh, container images. And what's great uh, is that with Cloud Run, you can run anything. So you can run even binaries, you can run any language, any runtime, any library. And there's a, a wealth of uh, a huge ecosystem of base images that are al already readily available. And I'm also interested, obviously, in the Java platform at large, uh, but in particular, uh, Micronaut, of course. So we're going to deploy Micronaut. We're going to containerize Micronaut apps and deploy that on uh, Cloud Run. Uh, a few more words as well is that Cloud Run is based on some open API, an open source project called Knative, which allows you to uh, run uh, containerized workloads on things like uh, Kubernetes engine or other uh, Kubernetes based um, platforms. Uh, and also on things like Enthos, which is the uh, uh, hybrid cloud solutions provided by uh, Google Cloud so that you can run the same payloads uh, on premises on your own cluster, uh, on another cloud than Google Cloud, on Google Cloud itself, etc. So I'm just not saying much more than, than this. Uh, a container has to follow a certain contract. So you have to listen. So it's really HTTP based workloads that those uh, container receives. receive. Uh, so you listen on 000, 000 on port 8080 by default, but you should be listening to uh, the dollar uh, port environment variable. Servers more, must stop in less than four minutes, but for serverless workloads, I think that's a good thing to start even more fast than this, even faster. Uh, currently, um, you cannot run um, um, anything longer than 15 minutes. The default is five, 
but currently we are also, I think it's in beta right now. Um, if you, you can join the beta to request longer uh, request time, request duration, so that you can run up to one hour, okay? Um, oops, sorry. Uh, so yeah, it's about stateless containers. So don't put things like database in your container. You'd better use external services for that because at some point your container image might be shut down because there's no traffic and spin up again at a later point when there's traffic that's coming back. And uh, in that case, you would lose anything that's uh, in memory, uh, if it's a database or on the file system, et cetera. And also things like having background activities, uh, like background thread, et cetera. Uh, the background thread might be stopped as well because it's really, the, your instance is running only when there's a, an incoming HTTP request coming to your container and the, uh, Back, 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 background uh, threads and such might be just shut down once your request finished serving. So avoid things like background activity. Uh, what's great with Cloud Run, again, with the pay as you go approach, uh, is that you're really built by a hundred of milliseconds, so not more. So small increment. And so it's proportional to the, the quantity of CPU, memory, number of requests. Uh, but the, the, the nice thing with the billing is that it's not like, let's say you have a request that takes 100 milliseconds. You're not going to be billed for each request that takes uh, 100 milliseconds, but rather it's the time your instance running your request uh, that is static and, and serving traffic till the end of the last incoming request. And you finished serving traffic to that uh, last request. So it's not the, let's say the green time plus the red time, the, the time, the first request, uh, the, the, the span of the first request plus the span of the, the second request, but it's really the overall time, uh, the first request started and the last request ended. So you'll build just for that, not just for each uh, piece and slice of a uh, hundred of milliseconds. Uh, before the summary, let me show you uh my cloud run micronaut application so i'm going to close a few things I can close this and that okay uh cloud run i'm going to close that i just want to see cloud run perfect so when you create uh, a micronaut application again with micronaut.launch uh, what's cool is that you, you even have a, a Docker file that's created for you. So you can use that and deploy your um, Micronaut application bundled within a, a container with the, the, the provided Docker file. So it's a possibility. But there's another thing I wanted to experiment here now that I wanted to, to show you during this webinar. It's the use of the JIB uh, plugin. Uh, what's great with JIB, it's uh, an opinionated way to uh, containerize Java application. So you don't have to mess with Docker files yourself. You don't have to touch Docker files, although this one is, is just, you know, fine. Uh, but I'm going to show you first the build.gradle for uh, my Cloud Run application. So I, uh, what is it? It's not this one. Looks like I, I forget to change this thing that was for my App Engine application. Okay, so I added the JIB plugin, which allows me to configure my Micronaut uh, Gradle build. Uh, where is JIB? It's here. To say, okay, so I want to let this JIB Gradle plugin create a proper Docker file for me. Uh, using and deploying my uh, Docker container image into the gcr.io, that's a Google uh, container registry where you can upload, uh, it's like Docker Hub basically, but hosted on the, the Google Cloud platform. So you can deploy um, your, your container images there. And you can also customize the way uh, the Docker file under the hood is going to be created. For example, here, 
I will need to use OpenJDK 14 Alpine. Okay, so far, remember with Cloud Functions and App Engine, uh, we were using the Java 11 LTS versions, uh, but here on a, inside a container, I can write anything I want. So I can choose, I mean, control of the version of Java I want to use. So if I want to use the very latest and greatest JVM, uh, because I want to use, a, I don't know, a Java records or um, anything like that, I can customize here easily with just a bit of configuration in my Gradle build file for my Micronaut app, the way uh, my container is going to be built. So here I'm not using this Docker file. I let uh, the jib plugin do that for me. Uh, and I'm going to show you my, uh, yeah, I actually have a couple of controllers. So I have a, a welcome controller and a news controller. Uh, if you remember what we did with App Engine and when, when we spoke about things like traffic management, etc., blue green deployment and so on. So what I did is that uh, I deployed actually two versions of my uh, Micronet application. So that there's one that's going to serve style color blue and the other one was actually serving style color green. So if I go, um, uh, is it running somewhere? Yes, so this one, oh, uh, well, it's, uh, it's running uh, with green. Let me show you, uh, let me go to the Cloud Run Cloud Console UI. So I deployed already my Cloud Run service, my Micronaut application, and you will see I have uh, different revisions here. Uh, the, the two uh, greens, green ones there, uh, the, with the check marks, I mean, uh, that I deployed an hour ago. But I added some tags. So I can say there's a, a blue version and a green version. So currently that's, uh, well, that was the blue version setting, right? Uh, yeah, that's the blue setting. I'm going to close a few other things. But I can use tags. Um, so let me uh, get, so if you look at the, the URL here that is provided, it happens, oops, it happens green dash 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 or blue dash 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 to the URL. So let me click on both. And so I have my blue uh, deployment and I have my green deployment. So I can do uh, things like traffic splitting, uh, canary deployment and, and so on, and blue green deployment if I want. And I can, um, oh yeah, the other thing I haven't uh, used it, but that's cool and that's new that the, you can set up continuous deployment. So as soon as you um, deploy a new container image, it can auto deploy as well uh, on Google Cloud Run, which is pretty cool. And there was one last thing I wanted to show you which is, so it's something that is in uh, alpha, but it's gonna be in beta in the coming uh, weeks. Uh, on Cloud Functions and App Engine, you cannot do things like streaming web socket, server set events, gRPC streaming, etc. It's not possible because there's a, a, a kind of server, the, the Google front end server that receives all the the requests globally for all the applications that buffers all the in incoming requests. But uh, for Cloud Run, that's something that's uh, changing and we allow streaming requests as well. So your project needs currently to be um, whitelisted to get onto the alpha, but in the coming, coming weeks, it's going to be public. So for the fun, I wanted to test the uh, server sent event support provided by Micronaut. So I created a, a news controller. I'm using a, a publisher here to say, I want to stream to do a, so media type text event stream. That's the server set, server set event um, mechanism. And then I'm using a flowable to uh, send a few messages, uh, like one every second. And something like this, you couldn't do that with functions or app engine, but it's something that new in uh, Cloud Run. And if I go, so I opened it, uh, where is it now? Uh, 
here, so it's already deployed, so I'm going to reload. It's going to stream the results one at a time on every second. So if you want to do things like, you know, chat apps or have live feedback of things going on uh, in your application and the underlying data, now you can use things like streaming, gRPC streaming, server sent events, etc. So that's about it. You can do lots of stuff with, uh, you can run Micron on all those um, serverless solutions on Google Cloud Platform. So you can run Micronaut functions, Micronaut apps, Micronaut containers, or can containerized Micronaut apps on the App Engine Cloud functions on Cloud Run. And you can take advantage of the various, you know, data storage mechanisms or communication channels like PubSub. Uh, there are tons of useful machine learning APIs uh, that you can take advantage of. And why use Micronaut on those, uh, on this platform? Because Micronaut starts super fast faster than anything on earth. <laughs> and it consumes less memory. So it's going to cost you less. It's going to use less resources. And that's really awesome. So that's about it. Thanks a lot for your attention. And wow, already uh, one hour has passed already. Thank right. you so much for joining us. Thank you again for your time. We really appreciate having you. And you. Um, it was a lovely presentation. So thanks again. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Goodbye. Bye, thank you.